A couple of weeks ago, I got to present at the Capture Conference in Apex, North Carolina. I put together a virtual production demo and also did a quick start guide on how to use the engine. This video is meant as a project breakdown, but for those of you who are maybe a little less initiated in virtual production, I'll try and explain things simply. Basically what we have in this scene is a green screen and a camera, but the camera is being tracked in CG and the green screen is being composited in real time. So this was my build. I put together a basic virtual production environment using a free map from the Epic Games Store, my Razer A15 Blade, and my Steam VR kit with two Vive trackers. I have an index, but you could just as easily do this with Vive gear. At the heart of this project was the simulation that I was running in Unreal Engine 4.26. It made the background look amazing, and what's more, it didn't cost me any money to be able to run it. While I could have gone nuts and created a serious production-ready environment and workflow on my desktop machine, this conference caters to filmmakers from nonprofits and church backgrounds, so I wanted to prepare something that could be easily done by teams that might not have big budgets. The gear from the production side of the demo was generously provided by some of the conference sponsors. Nanlite provided four RGB mix panels. I used two of them to light the green screen, and I used the other two for a basic key and fill setup on the subject. Canon hooked me up with their C300 Mark III and an 18 to 80 millimeter lens. I plugged the camera into my laptop and put the follow focus on the lens and I was off to the races. Because I was on a laptop and Genlock wasn't going to be an option, I wired up the scene using an Elgato cam link. This created a weird situation where my frames coming from the camera ended up being a lot slower than my Vive trackers. The data coming in from the Vive trackers just hit the scene way faster. So I wrote a custom blueprint that allowed me to cache the tracking data into arrays and pull my current track off the bottom of the cache. I could play around with this code to get more accurate frames. If you're trying to put together a low budget virtual production, I'd recommend trying something like this, especially if you're not sure a $600 capture card is going to pay itself off right away. Important to note that I didn't have my follow focus feature actually coded before I got to the show. This is something I really wanted, but I ended up being strapped for time. While I had a proper demonstration anyways without the fancy follow focus, on day two I had a lot of downtime before my demonstration. This was kind of cool as it let me show off the blueprint system as I was developing the features live via a screen that was in the room. I did have a little time to prep, but I chose instead to spend more time on the hardware end of things and 3D printed a custom part that I could use to stick my tracker onto my follow focus. This gave me something production ready and didn't leave me worrying about my tracker falling off if I handed it to a participant at the event. This definitely stretched my laptop significantly. I think the only thing I'd add to this setup would be an Atomos Ninja and handle recording externally, as my screen records off the desktop weren't so hot in the frames per second department. This ultimately didn't matter, as this was just a proof of concept anyways. While the conference was primarily geared towards traditional digital filmmaking, I was delighted to find a group of people who were definitely keeping up with the whole virtual production thing. The results were really cool and I was blown away by how many people came by to check it all out. All in all, really solid conference, a really fun demo, and just a really good time.